think we're ready to start our last session of today. Before we proceed, I just need to give a word of gratitude to Simon for putting up with me in the organization of SD30. So thanks, Simon, for all your patience. Uh, and now our last session, uh, thought-provoking talks, first with Jorge on the expressiveness of session types. Thank you. So let me just first check whether uh, this works. Okay, so not even with a delay, let's see. Okay, so yeah, um, thank you very much for the introduction. So this is a talk about expressivity and it's, it's going to be actually uh, kind of provoking talk in the sense of what expressiveness means, right? So it can mean many different things. And um, I will start with the traditional way of thinking of expressivity, right? So expressivity that has to do with process calcula, at least how people in process calcula understand expressivity. And uh, hopefully I will be able to convey the message that actually it's something deeper, right? That, that there is something that goes beyond the, um, the traditional way of thinking about expressivity. So um, the first thing I wanted to start with is, was like um, a challenge. And uh, it's actually a challenge that I try to articulate myself. So, uh, already some years ago, I did my post on session types. I didn't know anything about session types. And uh, I was just trying to understand all the different papers that were around, right? And then it was, I was very surprised that, uh, that there was no more comp comparison works about session types, right? All, just for the sake of understanding ourselves, right? So. I wrote these things, of course, this is me, I think, myself, so this is self-promotion, kind okay. This is 2016, so I was trying to, to, to articulate what it means, actually, from an objective point of view, to have expressivity when it comes to session types. Right, so I, I wrote it back then, I wrote it like this, so we have all type systems, which is the ground class of, uh, in which session types are included. There are many different theories, right, the, the, the landscape is actually extremely rich, if you think about it, this is out of richness. So you have sophisticated type systems that ensure different properties, and uh, usually these are the three properties that you would like to, to have, right? At least you would like to have protocol fidelity, you want some communication safety, which at least in this context is quite related to this, and then you have level of freedom, which is the most difficult property, the most uh, sophisticated one. Right, and then you have many different type systems, you have many different properties, <coughs> many different ways of tackling different properties, right? So it's quite diverse. And it's uh, actually quite a, quite a fascinating study, I will say. So, what is the traditional way of looking into, or of thinking about expressiveness, right? So, at least from the point of view of process calcula, you would like to think about the idea of relative expressiveness. You would like to, concur, to compare different languages, right, by, um, by encodability and separation results, right? So, this is not particularly a uh, niche, so I think this, this, comes, this is actually quite uh, common in programming languages in general. Right. So one way of thinking about connecting different type systems is by thinking about the classes of problems that they use, and then we can reason now on two levels. We will reason in terms of the languages on which we apply session types or behavioral types in general, but we also think about the encodings of the type structure, right? And uh, this, is the, this is the typical or the, or the classical view of expressiveness, I will say, in terms of uh, there is a, 
And in collaborative resolving, you can think of this as a correct compiler between two different languages. You could also try to think of separation resolve, which is a proof, like a counterexample, that a correct compiler does not exist. Right? And my proposal is like, let's try to look at type languages, languages with session types in particular from this perspective. Right? And this has a number of advantages. So this is general. So this is rigorous also. You can, you can prove theorems about encodability of separation results. This is flexible. You can think about the different criteria, correctness criteria that you would like for your translations, for your statements. Right? It's flexible. It's, uh, it's also practical to some extent. Right? Good. So this is, uh, this is the, let's say, the, the point in which I would like to, talk, to, to mention what this talk is about. Right? So I will overview some of these recent results. It's not a complete exhaustive overview. It's kind of self-centered in the thing that uh, myself and my collaborators have done. And it has to do with specific session types. And actually, there is, there, we have done in the, in the last three, five years, module COVID, we have done a number of different things. And all of them have a very strong specific motivation. Right? So we have looked into higher order concurrencies of the combination of the concurrency and functional features. We have looked into uh, multi path <coughs> protocols, propositions as sessions, so the proposition as types applied to session types. We have done quite a lot of things connecting functional programming languages with types into type pro uh, process calculi. We have also done what, we, what I would call property driven comparison, right? So we have different typing systems that ensure a certain property, for instance, double create and board termination, and we, you compare the classes of processes that are used by those, those type systems. We have also more recently looked into quality bright characterizations of session type. This is a very strong, let's say, expressiveness argument there. Because of this result that we obtained in higher order concurrency, then we looked into reversibility, reversible concurrency. We have also looked into reactive and declarative models, and the previous talk by Shinsia actually is part of that. Most recently, with the most recent pages, we have looked into how to implement things and, uh, and actually how to run specifications based on session types in a language called mod. So there are a number of different things. I won't talk about all of these things. I will focus on the first three items. Right, so, and, uh, and I have to say, this, this won't be a technical talk. There is no space for me to go into all the technical details. I choose drawings, and usually for each drawing, there's actually some technical story that I can, will be happy to discuss offline, right? Um, there is also, I put a, a note with pointers of the different things that we have done and the different things. It's not exhaustive, it's centered around the things that we have done. Of course, there are many things and many other people looking into similar things. Okay, so I will talk, talk about three things. The first thing has to do with high order concurrency. And, um, and it's my way of actually referring to things that we could call the traditional view of expressiveness, right? So we have encoding, we have language. <coughs> we would like to know whether one language can be encoded, represented, imploded, up to some correctness criteria, right? In the specific class of higher order concurrency, what you have here is you have process calculi, in which some values may contain processes, right? This is one of the natural bridges between the lambda calculus and, and things like the pi calculus. And the key standard here, or the, or the most uh, most, most famous language is the higher order pi calculus as developed for instance by San Giorgio. Right? So, uh, this is the kind of thing that the higher order concurrency brings in the session type setting, right? So, this is a protocol. I won't argue this is the most realistic protocol, but it is a protocol that uses higher order concurrencies. We have one client, two hotels, and in order for the client to find out whether the hotels are reasonable options or not, this client sends a piece of code. Okay? I won't claim this is the more realistic thing, but it's a protocol. Right, and the idea is that the client sends two pieces of code, this code, these pieces of code run locally on the hotel side, right? And they ask and they query the, the hotels for the prices, and then the code themselves, they synchronize, and they take a decision. Okay, so this is a particular protocol. I think this goes back, the one who mentioned this, this uh, earlier today, uh, the Dimitri's, uh, one of the Dimitri's uh, thesis, right? And, um, and this protocol is it's, it's actually indicative of the kind of things that you can do with higher concurrency and sessions, right? And, um, and if you think at least historically, what, what you, you can find is that this kind of, 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 uh, of settings, you can model them from two different paths, right? You can take higher order process calculi, in the sense of St. George, but many other things before that, and you add session communication, right? Another thing is, well, you, you, you will take your session pi calculus, 
and then you will add fast enough abstraction. So this is the, another extension that, uh, that you could consider, right? So there are different routes. Uh, this is probably one of the few technical slides. I just wanted to show you some pie calculus with sessions. Right, it's not fundamental for you to read every single element here. It's just a pie calculus with explicit uh, session establishment, so you have different ways of thinking about shared and linear names. And then you have a set of values. You, have, you can communicate values, right? And in the case of the pie calculus, the values are going to be names, right? What we did, and this is, this is referring to John work with, uh, with Noboko and with Dimitris Kusapa. So what we did was to find an orthogonal way of adding this uh, process passing capacity, which is actually passing of abstraction, right? So you will add an abstraction, which is a function from names to processes. So it's not the, the most powerful way of, uh, of abstraction, but it's something that goes from names to processes. And, uh, and that's how you will combine things at this level, right? So you will obtain a higher order pi calculus with sessions, right? And we call this H of pi. Okay, we won't claim that uh, that is the simplest uh, uh, acronym. Right, so this has the kind of, uh, of semantic that you could expect. So you have some, some beta reductions for the values, for the functional values. Again, these are abstractions from names to, to processes, right? You have the usual synchronization uh, mechanism here, right? So you will have also types for this language. So you will have a, a category of, or sorry, a, a layer of session types for, for this language, right? Of course, Combining names and, and functions, then you, you will find those at the level of the, of the, type, of the type setting, right? So you will have value types. Some of these value types are going to be related to functional objects. Some of the other uh, value types are going to be related to the names, right? Good. So the, the, the first kind of investigation that we did was uh, actually trying to dissect this higher order pi calculus into simpler things, right? So we have this H of pi. And we identify two <coughs> sub-languages of it. One isolates higher order features, right? So it only has abstraction passing. There is no name passing. There is no recursion, <coughs> right? The, on the other hand, you could also have another sub-language which actually isolates the first order feature. So you have name passing. And, uh, and this, this little drawing here indicates the fact that this is a sub-language. This is the, the meaning of this arrow. And, um, and the first category of results of the first uh, sets of results that we obtained back then was to, well, actually, the fact that we can encode, uh, we can encode the, this in, in this way. So there is an encoding from, there is an encoding in using functional elements of the first order of elements and vice versa. So actually, these, these two subcategories are, are equally expressive, right? And, um, and one of the interesting things here is that on encoding, uh, Process passing or encoding abstraction passing into, first name, into, into the first order setting. This is well known. This is what Sanjogi did. Right? The other direction, encoding name passing using functions, actually is crucially enabled by the presence of session types. Right? So we could do that because there were types around guiding the translation. Right? So we had, we had the, the, I, and, I, and we thought, I think that, uh, I, I, but we were surprised by the expressivity that we realized back then, right? There was also a non, uh, a non trivial use of non contractive session types. They also promote, promote these certain things. So it was quite interesting. And uh, there are some other things that, are done, that appear in this diagram, that, like this, that the extensions of these languages of, of this H of pi with higher order abstractions, with polyadic communication, the combination of everything, everything is encoded, right? So this is already a very nice language that has particularly cute sub languages and they are mutually encodable. And again, because I'm not going into, into the into theories and so on. So every time that you see well, these, these arrows, you can expect like a formal theorem, preserving types, preserving operation correspondence. And one of the things that actually we, 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 we discovered also here was the behavioral theory of everything. So in the book that you were referring at the, at, at, at the end of your talk about the, the need for type theories of bisimilarity. So we did quite a lot of things in that respect. So it's, it's, it's quite a powerful framework actually. So. More recently, then uh, uh, my PhD students started to look into, okay, well, if we have this very nice and well-behaved setting here, sorry, is there something smaller? Is, it, is this really fundamental? Is there something that we can actually go further in this investigation? So one thing that, uh, that, that he did was to say, okay, well, let's try to restrict, <coughs> let's try to come up with something simpler than session types, right? 
Uh, we call it minimal session types, and minimal session types are simply types in which you don't have anything as a continuation. Right? So you have, you're removing essentially the, the thing that makes session types interesting. Right? You may say, okay, well, you're ending up with a form of linear type. Yes, that's correct. Yes. But still, the fundamental issue here is that we are remaining in this nice framework in which we already understand a nice calculus Asia pi, we already understand the subcalculus. Like we already have a lot of work done in terms of behavioral equivalences, type behavioral equivalences, characterizations, and so on. So we would like to remain in that framework and try to see whether there is something even more fundamental. So, um, so this idea of minimal session types is, is just to replace these two, these two things that we have here. We have no continuation. The only continuation possible is n. So you have these single shot channels. Some of the, pow of, of the power of, of, of sequentiality is now translated or is now moved into the, into the object that you have here. You need to, do, to, have, to pass more than one channel. So you have a polyadicity here. And, um, and actually, this, this kind of idea came from we revisiting this very old result. I think a beautiful result, by the way, by Joachim Power in 96. Right? But then people were concerned about expressivity. There were too many pi characters, blah, blah, blah. So they, he, he came out with this result saying, well, every, every process can be decomposed as a collection of small chunks of part of processes that can invoke each other. So you have these kind of collections of trios processes in which processes have at most three nested prefixes. Right? So you can get something very small in terms of a pi calculus. Right? One of the interesting things is that a process, a normal process, a source process, and its decomposition are very tightly related. So there is this very strong connection, a kind of full abstraction-like result between a process and its decomposition, right? So we, we were inspiration from that in order just to try to make sense out of these uh, minimal session types. And the idea of a minimal session types actually can, can be explained more easily with a little bowing. So imagine that this is a process. Right? This is a very simple process. You have a process inputting something, you are out, actually inputting one thing, an integer, then a string, and then you will output a, a boolean. Right? This is the corresponding type here. And what you will do is to decompose this process QP into a process that actually is running three things at the same time. So this is a session, very simple session with three actions. So you will have in parallel three things interacting with each other, actually giving each other synchronization. Right? So essentially, this is a process, a trio process that will essentially capture the first action. This, at the end of this action, you will need to forward the parameter that it's received here. You will forward it to this other process that will do another input. You will collect that input, and then you will forward these two values to the last trio. Right? Yes? Uh, this is the top two first action. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, there is a combinator. Can be decomposed. Yes, the yes, top so. is a very powerful, another big green, <coughs> and I knew Paro uses this trick, but without top, yeah, so, so at some point we, we kept the polyadicity there for the sake of convenience, but indeed you can just go even, you can even decompose this into single lashes. <coughs> okay, I also get I don't have this, so okay. so. Actually, what we did then, so this is more recent results, so this is a, a PhD student who graduated last month. So actually, what he came out with was to, she extended the, the hierarchy that I explained before, right? So we had, with Novo and Dimitri, we had developed this. Then he came out with this idea of a pi calculus with minimal session types. He showed that the composition, right, for both sublanguages, for the first order sublanguage of H of pi, and for the higher order sublanguage of H of pi. So he came out with two different decompositions. And, um, and then he proved actually that the same kind of full abstraction life result holds, right? So the idea is that, well, you will, you will need to, 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 to put your conductive machinery at work in order just to demonstrate that the previous intuitively schema that I had in my previous life actually works, both for the first order setting and the higher order setting. And what, what I find, I mean, I, I think that this is quite interesting also in connection with other related work that decompose the session types into simpler things. But what I find uh, particularly interesting is that these are session types explained in terms of themselves, right? So you don't need to go outside the world of session types to understand what session types are. So you can find a concrete uh, reformulation or a concrete fragment of session types that will explain, that will allow that at least just to model very precisely what is the behavior of a session type process, right? So, so this is the first thing I wanted to tell you. I don't know how I do in terms of time. Um, 
I could talk forever about these kind of things. Sorry, could, could yeah. I quickly ask if there's recursion in these session types? Or yes, there is recursion, and recursion at the level of types and recursion at the level of processes as well. So, and the recursive case is, is particularly tricky and nice to, to, to but that, yes, there is a caution here. So, the other kind of result has to do with something that, uh, that, that is with multi-party protocols. and has to do with what is expressiveness really? What is the purpose of doing this expressivity beyond proving theorems, publishing papers, and so on? <coughs> right? <coughs> so, uh, one key purpose of expressiveness, I will say, is to transfer analysis techniques. So, you do an encoding, you prove properties about encoding, with a purpose of like transferring some property to one language or to one framework to another, right? So this was uh, discussed earlier this morning, right? So there is this idea of, we have a multi-party protocol, so you have three processes, P, Q, R, are implementations of a multi-party protocol, right? <coughs> and uh, you would like them to interact according to some well-defined uh, sequence of actions, right? What uh, in 2016, I think, was uh, that we proposed with Luis Kyle as a method of actually transferring the analysis of deadlock freedom from binary session types based on the Curry Howard interpretation of session types to multi party protocols. Right? And the idea was to extract a process that we would call a medium, right, that captures the sequentiality of the, of the global type. So if you take the global type, you extract the different sequential patterns there, then you connect that process with the different implementations, and then you will use that scheme in order to confirm. Uh, the presence of deadlock freedom, right? And it was particularly nice because, of course, you're reusing the logical uh, machinery. It's also nice because it handles delegation very naturally, which delegation is a pain usually when you're, doing, when you're dealing with uh, multi-party session types, right? Of course, a potential in criticism is that this is a centralized approach. Right? I, I understand the criticism. I don't fully uh, adhere to it. I have my reasons that we can discuss on this. Right? But then the question is, can you do better, right? So it's, it's a valid question, right? Can you do better? Do you need also to apply to this? So more recently, uh, my other PhD student came up with something simpler. Well, simple depending on how you see it, right? So you can actually intuitively dissolve the content of this process into the exact content that needs to be attached to each implementation, right? And the idea is that for each implementation or for each role in your protocol, you will come up with something called a router. So you will have a router for P, a router for Q, a router for R, and now these blends of routers and processes, they can communicate directly, right? And uh, so these are, this is sort of router, right? And, uh, and this is nice indeed because you're overcoming the centralized or fixed approach in which you, you really need to, do, to have something in the middle in order to communicate messages, right? And this is quite, quite interesting uh, because it works both for static verification, you have a type system that can allow you to type routers and implementations and so on, ensure that of freedom, right? But also for runtime verification. So the exact same machinery with minor tweaks can be adapted in order just to produce monitors that will uh, supervise the fact that, uh, that a certain multi party protocol is implemented. Okay. Right? I will. The lines between the nodes mean that they share exactly one channel or? Yeah. Yeah. So let me, let me tell you a bit about how this works, right? So, and again, this is a drawing, so we can, we can go into the theory of only one, but, uh, but I think the idea is it's, it's good enough, right? So um, we start from a protocol, and here we mentioned a specific protocol, which was a trigger for us, which is one of the protocols that uh, Al Chesty and Novoku mentioned in their paper, something that cannot be properly projectable for global and, uh, and, uh, and local types, right? So you have, you have this protocol, then you have the implementation that is actually an implementation of each client with a router, right? So you have a router for the client running the implementation, a uh, implementation for the server running with its router, and so on, right? What's happening here internally is actually quite interesting because it requires a different way, a complete revisitation of the idea of local types. So we have something that we call relative types, there are types that talk about two things, two, par two, uh, two participants at the same time, right? And using these, those relative projections, right, we, have a, we can synthesize automatically a router, and in the specific case of the static verification setting, you can use a type system, for instance, derived from the linear logic interpretation. This is a synchronous uh, priority-based classical processes, right? And then you have a synchronous processes <coughs> that enforce multi-party protocols in a deadlock freedom supporting delegation and recursion. 
So this is another way of actually thinking about expressiveness. The last thing I want to say, actually, is going beyond linear logic. And that's another way of thinking about what expressiveness means, right? Why are we tied to linear logic? There are very good reasons, right? But is there a world beyond linear logic? There is. So this is more recent work. I will skip the context. I just want to say, look, beyond the session type community, there is a lot of work in logics that have to do with, session, uh, with shared memory concurrency, right? And so, so one of the things that we did was to try to see what is beyond linear logic. So what we did was to consider the logic of bunch implications, so BI, right, which, which can be seen as the, the, the very core basis of concurrent separation logics, and try to recast these you know, propositions of sessions, or to the, the logic that corresponds to succession types, from linear logic to BI, okay? This is a philosophical shift, right? So you're moving from the idea of consuming resources and using resources <coughs> once or exactly once to the idea of, of accessing them. So this is like resource consumption and ownership. They, they are very different things. And in fact, linear logic can be are, are not to be incomparable, right? And, I, and we think that this is interesting because this gives you a new angle to the idea of non-linear resources, right? So beyond replication, beyond clients and servers. Uh, let me show you just the essential thing that you need to know about this. And is that is the fact that we need to go beyond the pi calculus <coughs> in order to have something that looks like this. This is a new prefix that we call SCOM. And this SCOM prefix is an idea that encapsulates the structural rules, rules that come from, uh, uh, from beyond, right? So the idea is that this row is like new, right? It's, it's, it's an indicator that there is a list of sessions that should be contracted or discarded, right? So the, the, the whole idea of awakening and contraction is really encapsulated in the, in, 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 in the structure of a process, right? So you can have different examples of that. For instance, this is a prefix that tells you, look, I would like my context, some, some x that is in my context to duplicate, to duplicate uh, the session x, right? Or I would like some session x that is in my context, I would like just to drop that session, right? And I can also have different, different kinds of sessions or, uh, or, or lists mentions he, mentioned here. Let me give you a more interesting example. So you would like to duplicate a session, right? So you have P here that is implementing something on X. You have Q that requires something on X, but actually requires its environment to duplicate X, right? So this is actually a sort of a request to the environment to say, look, I actually want to have two copies of P. One now mentioned in X1, the other mentioned in X2, and now you're actually duplicating these resources. So this is duplication. You could also discard resources, right? So you could also discard the fact that the session in, in X should be killed, right? So you could also do that, right? And this, this very, uh, in a way, this is a very elegant way of encapsulating the ideas of, uh, of BI and, and the different structural principles that are the difference between BI and linear logic. I think my time is almost over. I just want to close by saying, well, I think the expressiveness studies are very interesting. They, will, they, they are necessary, they are relevant, they are challenging. And because of session types and the different forms of session types, they, they actually come up in different flavors and in different uh, actually subtle flavors. Right? I have talked about three specific things, right? higher order session concurrency, traditional encodability if you want. I have talked about this analysis of multi-party protocols using routers. And we would like to describe this in terms of analysis, transferring of analysis technique rather than a mere encodability result. The last thing I mentioned is something that appeared in Uppsala last year. It's <coughs> the idea of logic-based sessions based on the, on the logic of the problems. And I would like to think that this is actually a nice step towards going beyond linear log and try to connect with other kinds of formalisms. And I think this is where I will stop. Thank you very much. This is probably two questions in one. Uh, the first one has to do with higher order, um, with higher order processes. Um, maybe it's just me, but I, I thought the, or I know that the result that higher order, uh, higher order process calculus and the pi calculus are equi-expressive. That goes back to the work by Ben Thompson on his work on chalks. Uh, what was it exactly that was gained by session types? That's the first question. Second is. Um, 
the uh, the use of minimal session types in this setting isn't that very reminiscent of the of the in Kobayashi and others work on on encoding uh, session types as linear types. Right. So, thanks for the question. So, the, uh, as for the first question, uh, that direction encoding higher order into first order. I mean, you gain type information, but uh, yeah, you just follow the usual the usual idea in order that in order to communicate a process, you you communicate a reference to that process. That part is unchanged. It's the other direction which you really benefit from knowing from session types. How to encode name pass and different processes. Uh, regarding the idea of, session, of minimal session types, yes. So, I, it's, it's, uh, the main difference is that we're, we're, we're relating, we're explaining session types in, in terms of session types. The Kawaii result is explaining session types in, in, in terms of linear types. You will say, okay, well, they're not di really that different, right? But, my claim is that, my claim is actually, what can you prove about this, right? Because we are remaining in the world of session types, we can reuse all this machine in terms of behavior equivalences, and we can pro prove something like this, right? Because we, this, is a, this is a session type process, this is a session type process, this is a, a behavior equivalence defined on session type processes. I think that's the main distinction point. Yes? The equations you have below, you say it's in a type setting, but it's the uh, are you translating the session types from one side to the other, or what? No, so because everything. It's not the same session type, right? Because in one language, it's the full one. The other <coughs> one is the, the minimal one, right? Yeah, but so that, do you that, have encodings also? No, because essentially, what you have, you said precisely, right? In one hand, you have like a full session type, in other, you have, in other hand, you have one session type that happens to be short. Right, so at the level of behavior equivalence, you take, you track the fact that some things are, you, you have one session type and then you have a list of session types or minimal session types, but this is not really... But you lose causality when you no. no, we don't know, be precisely because of the way these things are done. Here, so the causality, and this is a very important point, the causality is transferred from the session type to the <coughs> construction of the processes. Right, so, so it's embedded there, you don't lose it. <coughs> I think that for the sake of time, we'll just finish here so that we don't run out of time. So let's thank you. Thank you. Thank you.